a while back I bought this uh, volt amp frequency uh, meter display I'll put over there where I bought it from and I'll put over here the specifications uh, this is going to help monitor a current outbreak of octopuses I have. I've got one octopus there and another octopus over there. And what I'm going to do is cut into the first octopus's cable and run it through here. Run the neutral, a uh, pigtail in the neutral, a pigtail on the hot and they get uh, wired into here and this gets attached to this and this gets around the hot and then it all gets mounted in there and I've got a nice little display set up so that I can see how many amps I'm feeding through all my octopuses so here's the second octopus and this is the primary octopus and the box will go just down there and mount it against the wood. I also have another display there but that's going to be used in a portable uh, unit. So let's get to it. So it goes without saying if you're not comfortable working around AC which can zap you thoroughly don't do this. And there's the other end of this. So, I might put this on fast forward. So, I wanted to use this one because it's pretty hefty uh, cable. And a lot of the power cords out there nowadays I uh, kind of wonder if they can actually carry what they're supposed to. It is a nice heavy-duty cable. And if I didn't say it already, I'll be fast-forwarding. is a well-built cable. Okay. I think we need to make more. That should be enough. Oh, that's part one. Part two. And, uh, that should help. There we go. Okay, now time to put these in here. And I'm just going to check to make sure everything's wired properly. Ground to ground. Good. Good. Um, these are the same size, uh, but that is the neutral there, ground, and that's the hot, and the hot came out as the black, which is what it should have. 
Watch out the way. No. Look this one in. Good, good. So, actually, I'm just going to tie the ground together. I could use a Wago type connector or any of the twist-ons, but I might as well just solder it. That way I know it's perfectly good. And I better crank up the heat. And that's good. And I'll just put a heat over this. And yes, I know it would be easier to use the connectors, but since this is probably going to stay on here, why waste the connectors? That one down. Actually, it does look like I used a foam gauge on this uh, power cord. Or So, the wire that actually comes up to the display doesn't have to be the heavy gauge. So to make life a tiny bit easier, I'm using a finer gauge. And this way, then, I can hook it around. That way, the wire can never come off because it would still be carrying 120. Okay, I can actually specify which side for which. And the other one. And check to see if I'm still within the camera range. That's a no-no. If you're turning this tighten screw that way, this should be like that. Okay, let's go ready. Tail. And a little bit of solder. And I'll definitely crank the heat up on the iron. And make this one a bit longer. And if I was doing this as house wiring, I would not do it this way. You can use a safety inspector, but never approve it. Okay. And now. But before I uh, do the heat shrink, I'm going to test and make sure it works. Octopus number two, which is currently connected. What did I forget to do? I forgot to put that in here. Oh, lovely. So let's try this again with shorter wires. And of course, here's the plug. 
So, take this. Let's just Okay, I'm gonna on this one. And make sure I set it on low. Lights are off. That's connected. Plug it in, and now we can test with the heat gun. There we go, 114 volts, 5.8 amps, at 60 hertz. And now it's time to put everything back up there, or seal it up at least. So it's now all mounted. And I'll be able to keep an eye on the voltage and how many amps are being drawn.